بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم محاضرة اليوم عن اللاكريمال سيستم The lacrimal system consists of the lacrimal glands and the lacrimal drainage system The lacrimal glands normally produce about 1.2 microliters of tears per minute uh, Some of these tears is lost by evaporation and the remainder is drained via the nasolacrimal duct into the nasal cavity uh, the main uh, the tear the tears produced mainly form the tear film in front of the cornea, and this tear film is reformed with the leads uh, with every blink. Uh, we are going to discuss two main uh, groups of uh, conditions. First conditions related to the tear composition and uh, conditions related to drainage of the tears. Uh, abnormalities in the tear composition. If certain components of the tear film are deficient uh, or the, any, there, is, there is any disorder of the eyelid opposition to the globe, there will be a disorder of ocular wetting. This means that the tear film, which is having three components, the mucin component adherent to the epithelium of the cornea, the uh, aqueous component, which is the main part of the tear film, and the lead component, which is covering the surface of the uh, tear film over the aqueous component. These three components are very important for the integrity of the tear film. And the eyelid movement will regularly distribute the tear film in front of the cornea. The lipid component of the tear film, which is the first part, preventing the evaporation of the aqueous in the tear film. And uh, this is secreted by the meibomian glands in the lids. Aqueous component, as we said, secreted by the lacrimal gland. Mucin component is secreted by the goblet cells in the conjunctiva. First, we will discuss aqueous component insufficiency, which is called dry eye. The deficiency of lacrimal secretion occurs with age and results in keratoconjunctivitis sicca or dry eye. Uh, this deficiency also may be associated with dry mouth, dry mucous membranes, and this condition is called the primary Jogrin syndrome. When this con keratoconjunctivitis sicca or Jogrin syndrome is associated with autoimmune connective tissue disorder, the condition is called secondary Jogrin syndrome. Rheumato rheumatoid arthritis is the, common, uh, is the commonest associated disorder. Uh, what are the symptoms of keratoconjunctivitis sicca? Grittiness or foreign body sensation, burning, photophobia, heaviness of the lids, and ocular fatigue. These symptoms are worse uh, in the night, even uh, in the evening, because the eyes dry during the day from the evaporation uh, due to exposure of the tear film to the environment. In severe cases, uh, visual acuity may be uh, affected as a result of corneal damage, uh, which is the dryness will result in ulceration, corneal infection, keratitis, and so on. Uh, what are the signs of keratoconjunctivitis sicca? In mild cases, few signs will be seen, but we can put fluorescein angiography and we see small uh, dots on the surface of the uh, uh, cornea that produce fluorescence and this, these are called punctate staining uh, over the exposed area of the cornea and conjunctiva. In severe cases, <coughs> deficiency of the uh, aqueous component will leave the mucus and the lipid component of the uh, tear film in front of the cornea and this mucus and lipid component will be attached to the surface of the cornea as filaments and produce filamentary uh, keratitis causing pain due to uh, movement of the lid will uh, rub against the cell. <clears throat> what is the treatment of keratoconjunctivitis sicca? Supplementation of the tears with sub tear substitute will reduce the symptoms as eye drops. A, hum a humid environment around the eye is can be preserved uh, by uh, shielded uh, spectacles that uh, are closed spectacles that prevent evaporation of the aqueous component. In severe cases, uh, we may need occlusion of the punctae to decrease the drainage of the uh, tears. So the, the little amount of aqueous present and the tear film uh, can 
be sufficient uh, for this patient. And usually we do this occlusion of the punctae with temporary plugs uh, from silicone or acrylic. And then later on, if the patient condition is improved with these plugs, we will close these punctae temp uh, surgically permanently. The second component of tear film, the mucus component, inadequacy of mucin production will uh, occur from destruction of the goblet cells. Uh, the, and this occurs in uh, most cases of the dry eye, but particularly it occurs in specific cases, which uh, is the cicatricial conjunctival disorders uh, called erythema multiforme or Stephen Johnson syndrome. Uh, in this Steven Johnson, Johnson syndrome, acute episodes of inflammation causing target lesions in the skin, discharging eyes, mouth, and vulva. In the eye, they this will cause conjunctival inflammation and conjunctival shrinkage and fibrosis, with adhesions will develop between the conjunctiva covering the globe and the conjunctiva uh, uh, on the uh, surface, uh, inner surface of the lids, and these adhesions will uh, restrict the movement of the lids and the globe, and they are called simpliferon. <coughs> Uh, there also, uh, as a result of this fibrosis of the conjunctival sac, there will be also additional uh, aqueous deficiency. Uh, also, fibrosis of the lids may be associated with lid deformities and tracheases in these cases. Uh, other, co other causes that may produce similar picture to the uh, Stephen Johnson syndrome, uh, one, the chemical burns, uh, particularly with alkalis, which will produce damage of the conjunctival uh, tissue damage of the goblet cells and loss of myosin, which is uh, very important for the integrity of the tear film. Number two, trachoma, which is a chronic inflammatory uh, conjuncti uh, conjunctivitis or chronic inflammation of the conjunctiva with chlamydia trachomatis, and this will result in fibrosis of the conjunctiva, damage of the goblet cells, and uh, dry eye. The symptoms are similar to those of aqueous deficiency, but here we will see scarring of the conjunctiva. Uh, with the staining of some areas with fluorescein. Treatment uh, requires frequent application of uh, artificial lubricants. Third the group, lay a vitamin uh, A deficiency, pyrophthalmia, and this will cause childhood blindness world, in a worldwide scale, and this usually a vitamin A deficiency is associated with generalized malnutrition, especially in areas where there is deficient uh, resources like India, Pakistan, and so on. Uh, goblet cells are lost from the conjunctiva due to vitamin A deficiency, and ocular surface becomes keratinized and xerosis occurs. An aqueous deficiency also may occur uh, follow with, uh, associated with this uh, mucin deficiency and results in melting perforation of the uh, cornea will occur, and this is called keratomalacia, usually with infection uh, inside the globe, endopsalmitis, and uh, loss of vision. The treatment is to prevent this vitamin A deficiency by giving vitamin A uh, supplements to the children in these uh, affected areas. Uh, Abnormalities of the development of the meibomian oily secretion from the lid also will result in uh, loss of the tear film due to high evaporation from the surface of the tear film, and this is usually associated with chronic, chronic blepharitis. Uh, malposition of the lid margin will affect the tear film, as in cases of e ectropium, uh, the, the lid is not properly opposed against the globe, so it does not distribute the tear film uh, uniformly. Uh, second, uh, uh, also insufficiency of closure of the eyelids, as in seven near palsy, will result in affection of the tear film. Proptosis, where, as in this thyroid eye disease, may result in uh, dysfunction and uh, damage to the preocular tear film uh, with evaporation and the dryness. So we have to correct the lid deformities. Uh, we have to uh, may sometimes induce temporary ptosis by injection of botulinum toxin to the levator muscles to cover, uh, to make the lid cover the corneal surface and to prevent damage to the corneal surface. Uh, also, in cases of proptosis, uh, we may uh, suture the peripheral ends uh, of the 
ليد مارجنز من الابر اند لور ايليد ويتش وي كول لاترال ترسوره في تو ليميت ذا اريا اوف اكسبوجر تو ذا انفايرمنت اند ليميت ليميت ذا ايفابوريشن اوف ايكوس اوف ايكوس كومبوننت اوف ذا تير ثيم ديس اوردرز اوف تير درينج ذيس از ذا سكند جروب اوف ديزيزز وير تير برودكشن يوجوالي از اكسيدينج ذا تير درينج اند اكسسيف تيرز The will overflow over the cheeks, and this is called epiphora. It may be one, due to one of two causes. Number one, irritation of the ocular surface as a foreign body, uh, corneal foreign body infection or blepharitis, where uh, reflex tearing will occur in an attempt to uh, clean the uh, ocular uh, surface and the conjunctival sac. Number two, overflow of tears and epiphora may occur due to occlusion of any part of the drainage system. Uh, now we are going to talk about obstruction of the tear drainage. Uh, in infants, this uh, nasolacrimal uh, system obstruction uh, can occur as a result of failure of canalization of the uh, nasolacrimal duct. Uh, and uh, this because the uh, nasolacrimal ducts contain a solid cord of cells that uh, canalizes uh, just before term. So, in some uh, infants, it is not properly canalized and there is uh, imperforation of the distal end of the nasolacrimal duct, causing accumulation of uh, tears in the lacrimal sac and watering eyes. Uh, the canaliculi also may be partially occluded and in this case, swelling of the lacrimal sac will take place and this uh, is called the mucosyl. And infection may occur on top of this swelling, and this is called vacuocystitis. This is an example on the left side of uh, epiphora and nasolacrimal duct obstruction in children, in infants. And here we, the, we have the uh, mucosyl with inflammation on top of it, uh, which is acute vacuocystitis. Uh, diagnosis is by uh, the presence of. Uh, Uh, epiphora, excessive tears, matting of the eyelashes, uh, swelling at the lacrimal sac area, and the pressure on this lacrimal sac swelling will result in positive regurgitation, which is the regurgitation of the content uh, of the sac into the conjunctival sac through the uh, patent uh, canaliculi and puncti. Uh, the treatment of this con condition, nasolacrimal duct, congenital nasolacrimal duct obstruction, uh, is that if Uh, uh, we give antibiotic eye drops, we do massaging of the lacrimal sac, and we give a period up to one year for spontaneous canalization. If it does not occur, we go with a probe and do lacrimal sac, nasolacrimal duct probing under general anesthesia. This is how we do the probing of the nasolacrimal duct. This is a child with a congenital dacryocele. Uh, second part of our lecture is about obstruction of the uh, tear drainage in adults. Uh, the tear drainage system, uh, if it is blocked uh, down in the nasolacrimal duct, so the tears will accumulate in the uh, lacrimal sac and produce a swelling. This chronic uh, swelling will result in a chronic dacryocystitis and sometimes uh, chronic uh, inflammation will be over. Uh, acute inflammation will occur on top of this chronic inflammation and acute dacryocystitis may take place uh, as an abscess uh, in the inner cancers of the uh, near the inner cancers of the palpebral fissure. Uh, obstruction of the nasolacrimal duct usually occurs due to infection and the trauma to this duct. In history, these patients will complain of watering eyes with thickness of the lids. There is no inflammation of the conjunctiva, and the symptoms will be worse uh, during windy or cold weather. Uh, usually, there is a history of trauma or infection. Signs is, is stenosis may appear uh, in the puncti on the slit lamb, uh, but epiphora is, uh, if the punctum only is occluded, if one punctum is only uh, occluded, epiphora is not. Uh, usual because the other punctum will drain the, uh, uh, the tears. Other signs include uh, swelling at the lacrimal sac area with 
which on pressure of on this swelling of the lacrimal sac, regurg of fluid will occur uh, through the punctite to the conjunctival sac because the other end, which is the nasolacrimal duct, is occluded. Uh, also, we can uh, do syringing test injection of saline in one uh, punctum. Uh, if a normal person uh, we do this three, the syringing test, the saline will go through the sac to the nasolacrimal duct to the nose, and the patient will feel the saline in the nasopharynx. But here, as it is, uh, in these cases with nasolacrimal duct obstruction, the saline will regurg through the upper punctum, and this is called positive syringing test. We may do uh, X-ray uh, imaging with the use of a dye injected in the sac, uh, but usually we do not uh, need this investigation. This is the case on the left with uh, chronic dacryocystitis and swelling over the lacrimal sac area, and this is the positive regurg test. P pressure of this lacrimal sac will result in regurg of its content into the conjunctival sac. The treatment is dacryocystorhinostomy (DCR), in which we, in which we open the area between the lacrimal sac and the lacrimal fossa. We remove the bone of the lacrimal fossa and we communicate the lacrimal sac to the nasal mucosa. So we are bypassing the nasolacrimal duct obstruction. Uh, other uh, subject is infection of the nasolacrimal system. And as we said, there is development of a mucosal swelling in chronic lacrimal Acute infection may occur in top and develop acute uh, dacryocystitis. Uh, the treatment of acute dacryocystitis, systemic antibiotics uh, till uh, resolution of the acute inflammation. We may drain this uh, lacrimal abscess and uh, at the end when the condition disappears, our infection resolves, we do DCR for these patients. This is a fistula after acute dacryocystitis. Uh, uh, he can take the lacrimal uh, uh, system.